It's one of the oldest conspiracy theories in the book, that Shakespeare didn't write Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth and all the rest. And a new film, Anonymous, is now among those who come to bury Shakespeare, not to praise him. It credits the Earl of Oxford, an Elizabethan courtier, with being the real bard. The film, which premieres tonight, has sparked protests in Stratford-upon-Avon and outrage in the academic community, as our culture editor, Matthew Kane reports. So you are the famous William Shakespeare, whose labours I have so enjoyed. He's our best-loved playwright and wrote some of the most famous phrases in the English language. Or did he? According to new film Anonymous, William Shakespeare might not have been the author of his work after all. Yes, I'm addressing the writer of Hamlet and of Juliet and her Romeo, am I not? The film suggests Edward de Vere, the Earl of Oxford, as the most likely author. All art is political, Johnson, otherwise it would just be decoration. The author of these works would have to have been um, well-travelled, would have to have been a multilinguist, and would have to have had a, uh, a really um, deep knowledge of the inner workings and mechanisms of a, of, a, of a very secretive and paranoid Elizabethan court. All these boxes are ticked by Edward de Vere. This isn't the first time that Shakespeare's authorship has been called into question. Over the years, Sir Francis Bacon, Christopher Marlowe and Sir Walter Raleigh have all been credited with being the real author of his plays. Doubts centre around the fact that William Shakespeare was from a working class background and only had a basic education. But most Shakespeare experts reject these conspiracy theories. And in protest against the film, today some of them have obliterated all mention of Stratford's most lucrative exports from the town. It's very irritating to see Shakespeare, the greatest writer of all time, portrayed as a drunken, illiterate buffoon, and all the credit for his works given to the Earl of Oxford, who died seven years before the last of the plays came out. It's partly because of snobbery in a lot of cases. They would like to feel that the author of these great works must have been uh, a, a, an aristocrat. Historical fiction in general is currently going through a boom period, from the novels of Philippa Gregory to TV dramas like The Borgers. But although many examples of the genre take real characters and situations as their starting point, the constraints of form and the need to tell a good story can often impinge on historical accuracy. And some academics believe this is an irresponsible approach to historical truth. The fact that they have a little disclaimer saying based on a true story um, gives people an encouragement to believe that everything that they're seeing uh, is true. And this is, this is, I think, deeply worrying. We're living in an age where, A, uh, there is um, a tremendous historical ignorance, which of course is a danger, uh, but also that is combined with this inability really to decipher, to recognise the differences between fact and fantasy. Is it irresponsible to put forward this theory knowing that people are going to go away thinking that it's true? I think it's irresponsible actually to kind of tell people, you know, knowing that all these like doubts exist, to kind of till, tell them, you know, the man from Stratford wrote it. That's, I think, it's irresponsible. Irresponsible or not, perhaps Shakespeare himself might not have been too offended by the film. As a playwright used to reworking history, he might even have understood the filmmaker's decisions. Although his true reaction, like his identity, would of course be impossible to prove.